What is up everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today what we have for you is our first game preview of the season. We are here to preview the week one preseason matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Baltimore Ravens and I am so excited to get back onto this grind and there are so many new faces here on the channel and I'm very excited for the Jaguar football season to start because most of y'all uh, came here during the off season, so this is the first full season that y'all are going to be riding with me, and I'm very excited. Your boy will be live Thursday uh, to watch this game. I will be live right here on the YouTube channel, giving you my live reaction as well as some play-by-play -play to go along with it. So if you are excited for that and you're going to be at the live stream, why don't you go ahead and leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified every single time. I drop a new video, so you get notified when I drop previews, recaps, and when I go live, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Baltimore Ravens, week number one, preseason preview. So I'm going to be straight up with y'all to start off this video. I hate the preseason. Like, I mean, I'm excited that Jaguar football is back, don't get me wrong, and I'm excited to watch the Jags play, but I just hate the preseason. Because once you get done with, like, the first half, you know, the second half just kind of feels pointless because, you know, it doesn't really matter who wins. And then in the second half, you really got guys that are on, like, the roster bubble. You don't really see the position competition going on as much in uh, the second half of preseason games. And, you know, it's, it, they just never have been that interesting to me. You know, I could watch just, like, a first half of a Jaguar preseason game and be okay with it. And usually with me, even if we're getting blown out, you know, like, in the regular season, I have to watch. It. I have to watch it all the way through or else I get real bad anxiety. Now with preseason, I don't get that same feeling. I don't get that same anxiety, but I might have that same anxiety this year because I am so excited to see the quarterback play for the Jaguars this preseason. I'm even excited to see like Alex Magoo and Tanner Lee play, you know, in the second half of the preseason. You know, I'm very very excited to see what they can do, but of course there's two quarterbacks that we should all be very excited to see play, and that's Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew. Let's start off with Nick Foles. So of course the number ones are only going to be playing like a series, and I wouldn't expect, you know, guys like Leonard Fournette to be playing like at all, but you know, you got guys like D.D. Westbrook, DJ Chark, you know, Nick Foles, those guys, you know, that are on the offensive side of the ball, and they're going to come out first series and try to put points on the board because that's what you need to do. Uh, to establish that you have done all this work off the field and that you have built this team to be successful so we can get a little excited as fans. You know, I'm just, I'm hoping that the Jaguar offense, if we're on the field first, we can just march down the field with this, with our number ones and just get the job done and pound it into the end zone and score seven points. Now that's what I'm most excited and what I'm most looking forward to. But then after Nick Foles does come out of the game, we have an interesting prospect in Gardner Minshew. So Gardner Minshew has been getting mixed reports from reporters at camp. Some people like him, some people don't like him. Some people think he's average, you know. And there's some people out there that even think that he could be like the successor to Nick Foles. And you know, I haven't seen enough in him as a professional. I've seen him plenty plenty as a college football player because of course I'm a big WSU fan and I know what he did for the franchise and I really hope that he does the same thing for the Jacksonville Jaguars that he did for Washington State. This is a guy that just kind of takes what the defense gives him. He has a quick release and it's going to be very exciting because I know that there's a lot of Jaguar fans out there that are really pulling for Gardner Minshew and this is really when we get a look at him. You know, In the regular season, you're not going to see Gardner Minshew unless Nick Foles gets hurt and we don't want that to happen. So this is going to be your opportunity to get a look at Gardner to see what he can do on that field as a quarterback in the NFL. And that should be very exciting, especially because the Baltimore defense has been giving him kind of hell. You know, they, he's been getting some hell out there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, he's been getting some hell out there by the Ravens defense during their uh, joint practices. You know, he hasn't been, they haven't been letting him off easy. He's kind of been struggling a little bit. So, you know, to see him going up against an actual NFL defense, it should be very, very interesting. But the Jaguars seem to be really bought into Gardner because um, from all the reports I've seen throughout training camp, it's very clear cut who, you know, the one, two, quarterbacks are in Jacksonville and it is Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew so it's going to be very interesting to see uh, Gardner Minshew play with the number twos and just basically this offense as a whole is why I'm excited for this preseason game and there's some other positions that I also would like to look at such as the offensive line 
Now, I'd like to see Cedric Ogabaye and see how well he can do with the number ones. And, you know, if he does terrible, then, you know, J1 Taylor, he's going to be practicing with the number twos in the game. So that's going to make him look good. And this is going to be kind of when we start to see J1 Taylor take those first team reps because Doug Marone has been very stubborn with that. And that's just, that's how Doug Marone is. You know, it's the old school coaching mentality. You're not going to let a rookie just come in his first season and start at the right tackle position, and I get that. But, you know, this is probably going to be the game where J1 Taylor starts to come around, and then maybe by week two we see that J1 Taylor's name has been moved up the depth chart to see, you know, where he is going to be at for the season. Because I don't, I don't see a world where he doesn't start week one of the regular season. I think Cedric is going to struggle, probably. You know, he's, he's going up against a pretty solid front four, you know, the first couple of series against Baltimore. And, you know, Jaywan Taylor's a guy that needs those reps. So I think once we get into week two, week three of the preseason, you're really going to see Jaywan Taylor come in a little bit more to play that right tackle position. And I'm very interested to see this whole offensive line as a whole, especially without Cam Robinson and how well they are going to perform uh, against this Ravens defense. And, you know, I'm interested as a whole with this offensive line because I want to know what our depth's like. Like, you know, once we get into the second half of the game, I don't want to see, like, Tanner Lee just getting crushed, crushed, crushed like he did last year. He hella got crushed last year. You know, that was some that was some foreshadowing for the Jaguars last year. We're like, damn, dude, if we, have ever, if we ever get hurt on the offensive line, we're fucked. And, well, well, what happened? Our offensive line got hurt and we were fucked. I'd like to see more development out of that offensive line this year. And I'm very excited to see what happens. Mostly, Jay. Juan Taylor and you know Josh Wells too I'm kind of interested Will Richardson too Will Richardson's another big one uh because he's a guy that we really don't know what he brings to the table just yet and you know this is going to be his opportunity to kind of show you hey this is what I have this is what I have to offer let me show you how it's done on my side of the ball you know Will Richardson's a guy that didn't even get a crack at the bat last year to play even though there was tons of injuries to the offensive line he still was not called on to come in and play so this is going to be his time to shine it's going to be interesting to see how he plays and uh how that develops now another thing that's going to be very interesting is this defensive line because once we get into like the second quarter third quarter this defensive line is still going to be very very stout you know there's some names that we obviously need to keep an eye on like josh allen uh josh allen probably will not be coming out <clears throat> to start the game but he will be coming in you know i would assume once the starting defense is out there he's gonna come in and get some reps with that starting defense now it's gonna be interesting to see how he plays because this is a guy that probably isn't gonna be a starter depending on what they actually do with this defensive line as of right now it doesn't look like that that's the case but, you know, Josh Allen's going to be very, very interesting to watch in this preseason. You also got guys like Taven Bryan, their first-round pick from 2017, who I think should be getting significant um, playing time at the defensive line during this preseason just to kind of get him some reps and see what he is all about. And there's another guy, too, that I really have not talked about a lot uh, on this channel because I didn't think he even stood a chance on making the roster, but Dante Dontavious Russell... The defensive tackle we drafted this year out of Auburn. Looks like he's kind of pushing Eli Anku off the roster. So that's a position battle that I'm going to be watching for, you know, late in the preseason to see, you know, how Anku's doing and how uh, Russell's doing as well because that's kind of a battle right there between those two guys to see who's going to keep a roster spot, you know, be on the practice squad, see what happens um, into that situation. So the defensive line is definitely interesting. Linebackers as well because there's going to be a whole host of linebackers out there that we haven't seen play. And it's going to be very interesting to see how these linebackers come in and play. You know, Quincy Williams was listed as the starting weak side linebacker on the Jaguars on official depth chart. Um, and, you know, of course he's injured and he's not going to be getting any playing time. They just lost another backer today. So it's going to be it's gonna be wild to see, you know, who is out there and who performs and who doesn't. And uh, that's something to keep an eye on, especially because um, we don't know how well our linebackers are going to play as a whole this upcoming year if we're going to be without Telvin and Quincy and then we're going to have to see you know what the depth is like uh, outside of that you know guys like Leon Jacobs uh, Leon Jacobs is going to be a guy that you need to keep your eye on because he might get some more reps this year because you know injuries are happening Quincy Williams goes down he should be good by week one of the regular season so I hear but Leon Jacobs is another guy that I'm very interested and I'm going to keep my eye on also, there's some people in the secondary that are kind of making a name for themselves as uh, training camp develops as well, and I'm very interested to see how those guys rise to the occasion because if we don't pay Jalen Ramsey, then one of these guys might be moving up. And, you know, DJ Hayden is another guy I'm very interested to see, even though he's a starting nickel guy. 
Uh, I think that seeing him get some more reps after being pretty injured last year is going to be very, very important. And I am just, as a whole, very excited to see a lot of these young guys play. And these wide receivers are definitely, definitely what I'm most excited about. We also got the quarterbacks. We got some running backs that I'm also very interested to see. It's more of an offensive explosion that I'm really really interested in because the offense I think is the the side of the ball that's definitely coming together like this is the most the most important thing for the Jaguars this upcoming season is how well their offense develops you know what I mean so watching the wide receivers play is going to be huge for me and they have been making plays during camp and especially during uh their joint practices against the Ravens you know Chris Conley made Jimmy Smith look silly two days in a row and it looks like him and Nick Foles are connecting hell even Terrell Pryor's making catches that's another guy I'm excited to watch plays Terrell Pryor there's some serious depth guys that we have on the offensive side of the ball that I'm actually really excited about. You know, at the beginning of this, I said that I usually hate the preseason, but this year there's something about it. You know, there's some new pieces, some new puzzle pieces to be played with, and it's going to be very, very fun to watch. DJ Chark, another guy. You know, I'm not only interested to see what Chark can do as a receiver, but I'm very interested to see how he does. You know, the kick return, punt return game. You know, how the NFL special teams work nowadays. Not a lot of people even take punts or kicks out. So, you know, just as long as he, you know, he stays safe, maybe he'll make Make some splash plays as a punt and kick returner, but that is yet to be seen, and we're gonna have to wait and see on that. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not gonna decide and pick a winner because, like I said, winning in the preseason doesn't really matter. But there are some solid position matchups and some solid players to be excited about to watch in this week number one preseason matchup between the Jaguars and the Ravens. And I hope you guys are excited and make sure you stop by the channel during that preseason game because your boy will be live with commentary and. Uh, live reactions as well and that was my game preview between the jacksonville jaguars and the baltimore ravens what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget jet links down below as well you can like me on facebook at troop talks follow me on twitter at troop talks or follow me on instagram at trey von pixley also if you haven't yet make sure you hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time i drop a new video i drop new content on this channel six days a week ain't nobody outworking me them's just straight facts thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great rest of your day